You know, we hear a lot more about amino acids and maybe looking at uh, these amino acid ratios for different diet ingredients or different types of diets that we're feeding to, um, uh, to monogastrics um, for, um, and sometimes even on the rumen side. And um, that's a topic for, for this presentation and kind of looks at some research that uh, was presented looking at leucine and DDG and pig diets and then maybe the benefits of feeding additional tryptophan. So um, really, why are we kind of interested or why is this really important to us? Well, if we look at um, the, the tryptophan and leucine concentrations of some, some ingredients that are, are traditionally fed to swine diets, we can see that a lot of these different diets have really high levels of leucine. So 273, 319, and even corn of 0.84. Well, why is this really important? Number one is that a pig has a certain a leucine requirement. And um, at these concentrations, if we do the calculation based on total diets, um, some of these diets may, um, especially when we feed high DDG diets, um, 30, 40%, that we can exceed that, that requirement by, by several factors. So we're providing a lot more leucine than what the pig actually needs or requires or that they would, um, you know, that would we, we would ideally feed. The other thing to, to kind of take from this graph before we move on is this tryptophan reach, the tryptophan concentration. So um, overall, you know, all three ingredients have, have less amounts of tryptophan, but the thing is that with DDGs and corn, that we have uh, that, that elevated, so there's uh, significantly less tryptophan to that, to that leucine ratio. So we're, we're kind of disproportionate, especially when we compare it to soybean meal. And this is really the basis for, for the research that we're gonna discuss. So um, let's, uh, on the, uh, why is tryptophan really important or why do we really care? Well, tryptophan has several major roles in the animal and two of the main ones are serotonin and feed intake. So both of those can, if we have um, disruptions of those, they can negatively affect animal performance. Um, additionally, tryptophan com competes with leucine for transport. So in other words, um, both of these amino acids get absorbed in the animal through similar pathways. And um, it, it's really a concentration type of deal. If, if one amino acid is greater concentration, that they're probably going to uh, capture more of those receptors and get, get transported at the expense of the other, other amino acid. So if we have greater leucine concentrations, like we just discussed, if we're feeding high distillers grains diets and um, even high the corn diets, you know, could we be limiting that tryptophan uptake? And then furthermore, if we have uh, less tryptophan than we would desire, like with the Gs, okay, now all of a sudden, are we going to exasperate that, that, that situation a little bit more? Are we going to make, make that tryptophan deficiency even more? So to address this, um, some researchers looked at, well, if we feed additional tryptophan, can we improve performance just because maybe it's going to compete with leucine a little bit more and actually um, get, get absorbed by the animal? So this was research done at South Dakota State University by Kleiser et al. And they presented this data at the 2020 um, animal science meetings um, in the summer. Uh, they actually fed five different diets, um, the four DDG diets, and then all the DDGs diets, they, they included about 40% DDGs. Um, those four DDG diets had, a, had different um, uh, standard digestibility tryptophan to lysine ratio. So they went 15, 18, 21, and 24. So they, um, the, they gradually, they, add, they change these diets just by adding some synthetic uh, tryptophan to each of, the, each of their diets. They looked at both carcass data and performance data. We're just going to um, address the performance data for this presentation. And um, from a body weight standpoint, um, they saw a linear improvement as they increased that, that, that tryptophan um, concentration. They also saw an improvement, linear improvement in average daily gain as they, as they increase that. And as you can see, um, here's and the subscript, superscripts um, differ based on, on, on the numbers. So really they did see um, some pretty big differences between the 24 and 15 and not as much between the 18 and 21 for those, those two. So those were kind of intermediate. Um, so kind of a, a, approaching a trend for average daily feed intake, but, but not significant, and then no response in gait to finish. So what does, what does this tell us, or how do we kind of, look, kind of look at this? Well, it does appear that additional tryptophan does help performance. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of important, especially if we're looking at uh, feeding the high DDG diets, that maybe this, um, maybe we should have that kind of bump up that tryptophan level and improve the performance. But I think producers really need to evaluate the cost. So 
when we're feeding that additional tryptophan, it is going to be a, a, at, at added cost. Now, we do get the added benefit of uh, um, the performance, but will that value of that additional performance offset the cost that we have for the tryptophan? And that's where we're going to have to do the calculations and make sure that it, it makes sense um, to really kind of adjust this, um, that ratio. The other thing to take from this is that it's a very, very complex pathway with um, leucine and not only tryptophan, but other amino acids. And are there other ways of um, looking or kind of approaching this or challenge of, of the high leucine? So, um, you know, are there other amino acids that maybe we can supplement or are there other ways that we can maybe, maybe minimize the amount of leucine that we're feeding the diet? And I think all those things are probably um, good topics for research and something to, to keep in mind as we look forward um, for um, more information on this subject. Uh, thanks for your time.